HLH is a disease that's really considered very rare. It often presents in infancy. Um, the child may present with a fever, effectively, um, they may be a little yellow. Um, really, when, often in the first weeks of life, they come to an ER or to the pediatrician's office. Sometimes they get sent home and come back within the next days. And then they often have um, an enlarged liver, an enlarged spleen, and maybe quite yellow. And in that period of time, they are often admitted to initially the, the hospital ward and then sometimes if they're very sick to the pediatric intensive care unit. Typically the child has um, a low a white count, a low red cell count, a low platelet count. They do have the enlarged liver and spleen. They have other findings, namely the fever, um, sometimes a rash, that all kind of begins to look very non-specific, but when you actually begin to test them, including their ferritin level and various cytokine levels like soluble CD25, you begin to realize that the clinical picture begins to look more like HLH than anything else. So. Um, the course is typically characterized by them rapidly getting quite sick, staying in a pediatric intensive care unit, and then once they're diagnosed, um, treatment is initiated in, um, immediately uh, with uh, both steroids and chemotherapeutic agents, primarily because the disease, if left untreated, is essentially fatal over the few months. So physicians, once they had a feel that the patient has clinical findings and laboratory findings with uh, HLH, they'll be quite aggressive in actually uh, starting therapy in order to make sure that the child can get to the point where they can actually go on to transplant, bone marrow transplant, which is really curative. Today, there were, there's two sets of patients. There are patients that initially present with effectively classic HLH, and that's I'll call that first line. Often they will get um, essentially steroids and chemotherapy still, um, and they may get better or they may continue to progress. Those that actually don't uh, respond to conventional therapy are eligible for imipalumab. So that's actually a new treatment because it's so targeted. It hits the interferon gamma, which is important in terms of the macrocyte, uh, a macrophage activation and all the end effects uh, on end organs once the macrophages get activated. The other option is that you have children that have been treated with uh, steroids and chemotherapy and essentially they get better, but often if they're not transplanted they may relapse and in that setting they actually will um, benefit from starting dexamethasone or steroids and imipalumab at that point to get them to the bridge to get them to bone marrow transplant. Of course really varies. I think it depends on how sick the child looks and really the expertise of the physicians that actually see the child. A child might present initially to the pedi pediatrician or the ER, but hopefully get rapidly triaged to a hematologist, oncologist, or a rheumatologist to get worked up pretty quickly. And that's when um, the understanding of what the patient has versus what they don't have is made. And once the diagnosis is made, effectively the treatment is started. But often, and we've heard over and over again from families, that they will go undiagnosed for weeks or months before they actually get the right diagnosis, namely HLH, because the findings are so nonspecific that people think, oh, it's an infection, oh, it's a virus, oh, they'll get better. And when they don't over the days and continue to progress to get worse, that's when they begin to bring in the specialists to actually work them up further. In the Palamab, it is a monoclonal antibody against interferon gamma. Interferon gamma is typically elevated in patients with HLH. So we're quite excited because it is the first 
approved therapy for HLAs, and it's the first truly targeted therapy. Typically in the past, children were treated with steroids and chemotherapy. Today, we hope that in the future, uh, children will be treated with steroids and imipalumab as a, an alternative treatment, so they don't have all the toxicities that are related to chemotherapy, and that allows them to get to the point that the immune system is actually dampened enough that they can go on to a bone marrow transplant, which is the only thing that's curative.